Now, final five section in 5.4, that is now about uh, failure criteria. Okay, failure criteria, I will need to uh, swap to my whiteboard again because I have to draw you something uh, later. But now I first give you the definitions and then later I will give you a drawing for interpretation. Okay, so one failure criteria was done by Mr. Preska. Sorry again. One failure criterion was defined by Mr. Tresca, and actually later he uh, revised it because he liked another one better than his own, but he got the name. Okay. Now, failure criteria is the maximum, is based on the maximum shear stress. So two times tau max, you remember there was a one half in the tau max, so they can't, the two and the one half cancel. What remains is the difference of eigenstresses, the maximum thereof, Okay, after sorting, we know which one it is. Uh, that's the sigma one minus sigma three, and that's the equivalent stress according to Tresca. Okay, that's a definition. That's a choice. And for some materials, actually, it seems to work pretty well. For a few materials. I have put some links in the additional reading material where you can read more about failure criteria and the history of those. Okay, the second one is von Mises based on the maximum specific elastic distortion energy. And that one actually relates, is a stress value according to the shape change energy. Okay, so you remember shape change was quadratic in stress, so we'd have to take the square root of that object in order to get a stress, Newton per square meter on the left-hand side. That means we have to have a square root of Newton per square meter squared. Uh, it has a three that comes not of nothing, but it's, not so easy to explain the prefactor, and I will not do this today. And it has the square root, and it's the second invariant, but not of stress, but of deviatoric stress. Okay, so all of them have to do with shear stress. This is the maximum shear stress. This is the second invariant of the deviatoric stress tensor, which quantifies all possible shear stresses. This one is only using the first and the third invariant, Tresca. J2 is using all invariants as you see it here. Okay, so that is where what this is about. Total criterion is quite lengthy and complicated. I always like to use a simple case. So the one dimensional stress, like during the uni actual tensile test, that one I want to consider now. So the two other stresses are zero. In this case, the maximum shear stress criterion becomes just one half sigma equivalent. Okay, and sigma equivalent is should be smaller or equal to the maximum allowable stress. So the value which you get in a calculation will depend on which stress state you have. That's clear. Different stress states will give you different values. Okay, and the sigma f, which I had put on my slides, that was the, uh, this is, abbreviated here as allowable stress. Okay, now for von Mises, Huber or Henke or however they call you, which abbreviation you use, I mean, you see sometimes French, sometimes uh, English, sometimes German names, and the different communities were attributing this to different people, which were all, all more or less working at the same time more than 100 years ago. Okay, now for von Mises, uh, same situation, here, the shape change energy becomes something which is sigma equivalent squared with this prefactor. Okay, and again, the equivalent stress must be smaller or equal than the sigma f, which I have sketched before. Okay, now the question is, what is bigger? Which one of the two criterion is bigger? Okay, uh, this is not it. Um, now, help me by answering this question. So from, from Mises, we get the one half sigma equivalent from, sorry, from Tresca, we get the one half. And here we get the shape change energy with the one over three with this prefactor here. And sigma equivalent will then be sigma one here. Okay, you remember above here, sigma two and sigma three are zero. Sigma one goes in here, 
sigma 1 goes in here, so we have 2 times sigma 1, that, that term is gone. So here we have square root of 1 half sigma 1, which should be written here. I somehow lost it. So square root of 1 half sigma 1. This is uh, square root of 1 half is something like 0 0.7 for von Mises. From Tresca, we have 1 half. So von Mises is bigger than Tresca. 0 0.7 is bigger than 0 0.5. Okay, and I can bring this now into my sketch. So from this, assuming a special situation, I have now, how much time do I have? 10 more minutes. Okay, so at least I can bring section five to a good end. And I don't make a break now. I just want to be sure that I finish within time. Okay, now that was 5.3, 5.4, sorry. And now the last few slides are just about showing you something which makes link to a case. I don't know if you were using Hippola in your previous courses uh, to a case which is a real situation. Take a special case of a construction and that construction is a beam with a circular cross section and given bending and torsional moment acting on the beam. Okay. In the Hibbler book, you can find it on this page, but a torsional moment, bending a torsional moment on a beam is something you can find in many literature and also on the web. Okay, now, oh, there are still Dutch words. I did not see those. Uh, the I, the R, this, R, this is the relation which gives us the normal stress, sigma 1, 1, on this beam. The beam is in the one direction, and this one comes from the uh, bending moment, uh, sorry, this one comes from the torsional moment and gives us the shear stress. Okay, and this is the definitions which you have derived before for different cross sections, the numbers will be different here. Okay, now, what do we do with this? So we know that on this beam there are only these two stresses active, so now we can write down the stress state. A lot of zeros, the normal stress in the one direction and the uh, shear stress in the 1, 2 direction, and we use symmetry of stress, so it must be in both non-diagonal elements. Now, we can answer the question, what is the principal stress of this stressed matrix? Okay, we follow the linear algebra procedure, we write down the characteristic equation, uh, one principal stress answer is trivial, it's zero, and the other one is the solution to the quadratic equation, that one you can write down out of memory, and the solutions in the right order are now sigma 1 times the first one, sigma 2, 0, and sigma 3, the second one with a negative term here. So that one must always be smaller than 0. When you look inside here, the term under the bracket is larger than the first term, so the minus makes it negative. Okay, so this is the solution procedure. In this case, it's not so complicated. You can do this quickly with a little bit of practice. Okay. And now we use the equivalent stresses as defined before using the stress state in the, be in the beam. Okay, so Tresca equivalent is becoming this simple thing here. Only the square root survives, the sigma 1, 1 uh, terminates because of the minus here. Okay, and von Mises is in this situation, this is the definition, in this situation it's sigma 1, 1 square plus 3 sigma 1, 2 square. Here it's four, and I was running into a trap here, I'm afraid. Oop. Okay, so expressed in bending and torsional moment, sigma tresca can be now expressed as a function of bending and torsional moments of the radius and the, uh, what is IB, uh, the, the, the shape of the 